tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed, and a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to tinfoil hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink. From the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Are you ready to get your mind blown? Good morning, Swan! And welcome to Tim Fall Hat. You know I am. You know I'm here to do. I'm here to rock. That was bad. It's slow. You're dragging, son. You're dragging. Oh, uh, guys, I'm live from Miami, man. We should do tinfoil hat conferences all over the country. One stop we definitely have to go to is, is South Beach, bro. Everyone's like, dude, it's getting shady down there. I love it, man. I mean, it is. I, I do. You live the Grand Theft Auto life when you come to South Beach, dude. <laughs> It is great. I hope you guys all get a chance to come to South Beach. Join me as over, always is Xavier Guerrero. What's up? You sound like you're having a blast out there. Dude, I'm loving it. I, I do. I just walk around. I mean, you know, Johnny and I have a, a, a podcast called Broken Sim, and I just walk around with my dog and just watch the freak show. South Beach, right there. The best dude the best i mean if we're grand theft auto you can just drive on the street kill a hooker like it's nothing here 50 points just walking around everywhere and on the ones and twos live from las vegas where he's making love to his lady the man the myth johnny woodard aka j nice i haven't had much time to make love to anything uh just you know, I, we just got here like five Johnny, hours you drove, drive hours. or did you fly drove we drove yeah and we didn't get who drives leave, so. when you go johnny because you hate i drive driving. everywhere I drive everywhere like with everybody. Th- yeah, Johnny, no, she, she, she doesn't. You she's a, women don't like driving. Me. Women don't like driving. He, he likes to blow jobs on the road, Sam. You know. Oh, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny getting BJs on the road. Guys, if you want to see us live, I will be in Miami tonight. And I don't know when this is coming out, but Miami, uh, June 3rd and 4th. And then Tim Fall Hat is live in Houston. Eddie Bravo, Xavier Guerrero, Reed Becker will be live at The Secret Group. We're doing two shows. First show, stand-up comedy. And second show is Swarm Tank. You can come on stage and pitch us in a minute or two your conspiracy and we will break it down whether we believe or don't believe. Grab your tickets now. Tickets are moving quickly. Let's pack it out and show Houston how it's done, okay? And then I have, I am June 19th. I am live in Bakersfield. I'm going to be live there. Two shows. Uh, you can come see me there. All tickets are at samtriplee.com. If you want to support the show, there's a couple ways to do it. You can just go to uh, tinfoilhattshirts.com and grab a t-shirt. We have a bunch of them there. I have some new ones about to go out and I'm making a brand new shirt that I think you guys are going to love and that will be available very soon. Just go to tinfoilhattshirts.com. And then if you want to buy some premium package from all of us, some content, let's say these two episodes aren't enough for you and I can understand why you want a little more. All of us have premium content on Rockfin. That's R-O-K-F-I-N.com. I am head of comedy development there. Go, you can grab what you got. You got uh, Tim Fall Hat Premium there. You got We Don't Smoke the Same is there. Broken Simulation is there. Zero is there. Conspiracy Social Club is there. We're talking five different shows just from this podcast on Rockfin for only $10. For only $10. So if you're on Patreon, I, I understand. But please check out Rockfin and support all of these shows. Guys, is there anything else? That's pretty much it. It was rock. So uh, this uh, we had a, we had somebody cancel on. So uh, our next guest was nice enough to jump on. His name is Conspiracy Kyle, and he has a podcast called Conspiracy in the Force. I'm very excited to have him on. It was a fun episode, right, guys? I thought it was a lot yeah, of fun. No, yeah, yeah sure. it was different. Yeah, you different. Know I, you know, I love this shit. Just a mix. Oh, Johnny loved it. Full boner the whole show. <laughs> Got that <laughs> dork boner rocking, bro. Guys, I love you guys very much. Please enjoy the show. Hope you see 
See you in Miami or in Houston. Enjoy the show. Drink from the fountain of milk. Okay, man. So let's get into this. I decided uh, we should try to do a fun kind of different kind of podcast today. You know, uh, something a little unusual, not your average Tim Fall hat episode. So I wanted to mix it up and I'm super excited about this guy, this guy and his podcast and what he's here to talk about. You can find him on Rockfin. He has a podcast called Conspiracy in the Force. Force. Please welcome Conspiracy Kyle. How are you, Conspiracy Kyle? Uh, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Uh, t- for those who may not be familiar with you, can you tell us a little bit about you and your podcast? Sure. Um, so uh, I started this podcast, you know, during the quarantine. I mean, I think, you know, me and 17 million other people started a podcast during the quarantine, right? Um, so about, you know, a, a year, a little over a year ago, I kind of started getting a little awake to what's really going on in the world. Um, and as I started looking at Star Wars, you know, it's something I've always loved since I was a kid. But then with, you know, a fresh set of eyes, you start looking at some stuff and you're starting to look at stuff a little bit sideways. Like, wait a second. Is this, is, is this telling me what I think it's telling me? Is it intentional? Is it unintentional? So there's a lot of stuff where I, I'm my podcast. Basically I make parallels between um, events that go on in star Wars versus events that go on in, in the real world. And the one we'll, t- we'll tackle off, off the bat um, is, is just kind of, you know, a communism totalitarian governments. I think that's something that, you know, most, um, most people are familiar with when, when it comes to Star Wars and the Empire and, and a lot of how that um, shakes out in, in our world and really what's going on right now and what's gone on in the past with Nazi Germany and in communist Russia and all that kind of stuff. There's so many parallels and so many things um, within there. So that, that's kind of that's kind of what I've been doing. And um, I, I love doing it. You know, it's it, for me, it's like I have to do a little bit of research on the conspiracy side, but the Star Wars stuff, I already know, like the back of my hand. So. I already got that in the bag. It's just kind of making those making those connections, and it's such a wide universe. There's so much to to digest. Uh, I want to get in. I want to hear about all this. I want to get your thoughts. And Johnny, you like Star Wars as well, right? Are you a Star Wars guy? Yeah, yeah, I am. Um, sure. Surprise, surprise. I'm, I'm a uh, yeah, for sure. So original, original uh, trilogy. Yeah, that's why I want to get into. You know. Star Wars is like, I don't know if young people are into it as much as the the older generation is, but I mean, I they really- They like these prequels, dude. The younger kids love the prequels. Yeah. I, I don't get it, but they love the prequels. They go gaga. Do they, lo- do they love the wokeness of it? I don't know about that. I mean, what, I, I mean I'm talking about like Phantom Menace, you know, ta- uh, I can't even remember their names now. It's, it's been so long since I saw But like the Mandalorian, uh, I think we can all agree was absolutely oh, phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, that's great too, but then right. with all the stuff going on with Gina Carano and all that stuff, it's just like, I know that younger people maybe aren't into what that represents and stuff like that, but is the passion for Star Wars as strong as it was? You know, Star Wars was the first, not the first movie I ever saw. The first movie I ever saw was Peter Pan. But like, I think the second or third one was in fact Star Wars at the drive-in with my grandmother. And uh, I remember like it was mind blowing, but is it the same kind of uh, connection with these younger people? Yeah. So with, with the new movies, you know, ever since Disney has bought it, it it definitely, you can kind of see a shift in the fan base. You know, you talk about a lot of this woke stuff, a lot of, you know, things they've been weaving in and out through these stories, Um, what they're really trying to do. And, you know, you see this in in a lot of, in a lot of stuff, you see it in politics, you see it in a, a lot of places they're really trying to wedge a divide between a a younger fan base and an older fan base. Right. Because we all grew up, we saw the original trilogy, you know, prequels, they're kind of, you know, a mixed match of those. What they're doing with the the sequel trilogy is kind of way, way off in left field. Um, And a lot of people, you know, my age or older that really grew up with the original trilogy are kind of pushing back saying, well, we don't really like it because of what it's doing with the Luke Skywalker character, what it's doing with the story elements. It was supposed to be this kind of concise story and now they're going off in all these, all these crazy directions, but, but what they're doing to, to drive this divide is, well, um, if you don't like these sequels, well, it's obviously because you're a racist because there's a black character, there's an Asian character. You're obviously a racist. It's like, no, no, no. I just, the story wasn't great. You know, or, so, or, you, or you hate women. That's the other line. I mean, or, or you hate women, right? You're either you either hate black people, you hate Asians, or you hate women, or, or all three. 
um, you know, and it, it, it's kind of unfortunate that you can't even have an honest conversation about certain story elements without without that that coming up. And I think Disney shot themselves in the foot because, you know, they tried to get woke and, and they did try to have a, a diverse cast and there's nothing wrong with that in its face, but they didn't give those diverse characters much to do in the universe. So that when you go to criticize them based on the story that Disney put together, you're immediately called a name of some sort. And it's kind of unfortunate and it kind of takes away from, from the, the funness of it, to be well, honest. Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong here, but the, the last three films, you know, the first film was directed by J.J. Abrams, right? And, mm -hmm. But yeah. then when the, the director for the second film, as I understand it, was essentially given no guidance. And, you know, I mean, like, no, like, hey, this is the story we're going for over this three film arc. He right. just did whatever he wanted to, which in that film basically reversed everything that was built up in the first film. And then they broke, yeah. because because fans revolted, it, you know, like hardcore fans, the ones that buy shit, read that that way. The ones <laughs> right. that actually uh -huh. they make their money off of right. because they revolted. They brought Abrams back to kind of, you know, pull it out of the ditch, which is I mean, it was a, a impossible job at that point. And Abrams himself is not the most inspired guy. But right, right. I, am and I, even, am I wrong even about that? I mean, how how did they how did they manage uh, the biggest film franchise in the world that way? You know, where each well, each director just did whatever the hell they wanted to. Well, what they wanted to they they wanted to basically set it up like a Marvel franchise, right? You see these Marvel movies mm. coming out three, four, five of them a year. When Disney bought Star Wars, they saw it as an investment opportunity. They didn't see it as as a franchise with a mythology that that is a little bit different. Than, than Marvel. I mean, I, I enjoy the Marvel movies, but they can be, they're pretty throwaway, right? The yeah. same kind of story beats happen in every Yeah, movie. and you're right. These were blockbuster auteur films that George yes. Lucas made. I mean, they were huge, but they were auteur films. He made every decision. It was one guy right. who plotted them out. Yeah, so right. I see what you're saying. Yeah, if they tried to make and, them like Marvel films. And people, you know, um, have different thoughts about the whole prequel trilogy, but at, at least I would say that they had a concise story from start to finish. What they yeah. did with these, they wanted a Star Wars movie to come out every single year, every single year, like yeah. a freaking, um, like a factory. Like yeah. Star Wars doesn't work like a factory. There's so much mythology. There's so much, I mean, there's like Greek mythology, Egyptian, all this ancient mythology and religions they bring into this. You can't just crank that kind of stuff out in a meat factory. It doesn't. It doesn't work that way. Um, so what happened is that first movie, The Force Awakens, came out in 2015. In 2014, they had already had the script and everything in pre-production for the the next movie. So they didn't even wait to see what happened when that first movie came out, what the reaction to it was, because I think that would have completely changed their their direction. Um, I, I would say, like The Force Awakens, you know, a, a lot of people and I kind of agree it's kind of a rehash of the original movie. You know, a lot of the same story beats, but it had a lot of great humor in it. Um, and I think that's one key element to Star Wars that a lot of people don't always realize is go watch those original movies. I mean, they're really, really funny and like in like oddly timed humor and kind of um, precarious situations. It, it kind of um, you know, lightens the mood a little bit. So if they would have waited to see the reaction to that, they, they could have said, OK, well, why don't we have the next movie have that same kind of feel and vibe to it instead of having a different director who, who Ryan Johnson, who directed that episode eight. His whole deal is subverting everything that he and, he and he's and he's clearly said that in many interviews. He wants to subvert audiences expectations about the, what they want to see almost to uh, the nth degree. Right. Like like j just to show how smart he is. He's the smartest guy in the room. And like, I don't I don't think that really has a place in Star Wars. I mean, he's made a lot of other great films, but I don't think that really had a place in Star Wars. Basically putting his own touch on like, this is my movie. It's like, no, no, this is our movie. Like we are the Star Wars fans. Like we we inherently own this franchise because we put so much time and effort and energy and investment, um, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, all the, into it for you know 30, 40 years. You don't get to just come in there and act like it's your own personal playground and do whatever the hell you want. Guys, I want to tell you about our friends at Magic Spoon. Guys, Magic Spoon, listen, one of the best parts about being a kid is eating cereal, right? You just load up and you are ready to rock. Johnny, you love rocking off cereal, don't you? Yes. <laughs> but listen, let's face it. I'm trying to cut down on my carbs, on my sugar, my big, unhealthy food. Big time. Okay? I realize I just can't eat anything anymore. All right? I got to mix it up. Yeah, I'm doing protein shakes and powders for a long time. But finally, I have a delicious way to get up in that after, before, after a workout, okay? 
better eating, better ways, and that's where we go with our good friends at Magic Spoon. Look Woo! at this. This is for you. What'd you want? Peanut butter? Peanut butter. We got peanut butter. Here we go, Johnny Catch. Boo, bang. A bang. Nice catch, Johnny. Show them the box. That's Show them the box. Goats. Bang. Johnny, Very that's nice. right, dude. Here's the thing about Magic Spoon you're going to love. Look at those Zero stats. grams of sugar. Amazing. 13 to 14 grams of protein and only four net grams of carbon each ser serving, okay? Only 140 car calories a serving. It's keto-free, gluten-free, green, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb-free, GMO-free, okay? It's all that action. Okay, it comes in a variety pack. Okay, four flavors that cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. Yes, dude. I love mixing it up. Look at those colors, and I love the boxes. They are so cool, especially if you got kids. Kids will love these boxes. They're very cool. So, this is what I want you guys to do. Go to magicspoon.com slash tinfoil to grab a variety pack and try today. And be sure to use the promo code Tin foil to at checkout to save five dollars off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in the product, it'll back it with a hundred percent happiness guarantee. Wow. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, get the, your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at Magic Spoon. dot com slash tinfoil and use the code tinfoil to save five dollars. I, uh, I, you know, when I heard they wanted to do a film a year, I go, oh, this is going to crash and burn. It's the same thing with guys who try to do a, a special a year. It's, it's impossible, man. It's impossible. You know, the guys who can do, uh, you know, you had Louis CK was doing it for a while. George Carlin was like an anomaly, but the rest of them is just like, it just starts getting watered down because it doesn't become about putting out the best. It becomes... I got to put out an hour and the right. putting out of the hour becomes more important than the quality of the right. hour. And, right. uh, you know, and, and Disney is learning that, listen, there's so many options out there now that if we don't have to spend our $10 a month on Disney plus, we don't have to go to the movies. We will take our money elsewhere, which is in my humble opinion, the the smartest most spiritual way to show your voice your opinion mm -hmm. and again i say it every episode but you know a lot of times with the conspiracy community everyone's always like and hey, what are you going to do about it well we do what the thing we can do which is pull our time energy and our loosh out of something that we don't believe in and then it starts to crumble and right. then when you and, and it's like the, the the problem with Hollywood is it, it's become a smaller and smaller bubble in which nobody really ever talks to anybody outside their circle. So mm -hmm. there's no, there's no dissent. There's nobody going, Hey man, that doesn't make any sense. And you know, I told the story before, but my friend Marcus King from high school wanted to go to college. He's black. His, he had a choice between it's all black school and it's all and uh, Washington University, the Huskies. And his dad said, go to the Washington University because the world isn't just black. That's not how it is. It's very diverse. And, you know, you got these woke people running these studios, living in la la fantasy land and not talking to the average person. And the average person is fine. Every, is, it's fine with diversity as long as it's not weaponized diversity and you're using the best of the best because so right. much of this diversity is just using plug and play stereotype people that you instantly go, oh, that's it. That's it. a great example of that is Tom Segura, right? Tom Segura is Latin. People don't know that about him. He speaks mm -hmm. fluent Spanish, but when he Almost goes- Almost as good as I do. Yeah. <laughs> Almost as good as I do, and I and I'm and I wasn't born here. He's got the great Spanish, and he does that proper Spanish, like from England, not that slang Mexican. Menpaca, <laughs> homie. Uh, he says like proper from England Spanish. There's two different ones. It's Spaniard, but he's 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 perfect Spanish. Yeah, and no one knows it, and it's he's killing it out there. He goes to Mexico, and if you don't know Spanish, you wouldn't know he's out there killing the Mexican community. No, he's wonderful. He is a 5-2 player. But he goes to these meetings and meets with these suits, and they look at him, and they're like, oh, you're a white guy. He's like, no, I'm, I'm actually Spanish. Yeah. 
And it do- it doesn't matter because it doesn't fit what is ultimately Hollywood, right. which is racism. It doesn't right. fit into this ethnic stereotype that they want everyone to be in the right. long run. And which which for me is like it hurts people of diversity because now you're going to start getting to the point where you're just like oh dude they got that because they're this because they're that and they're like no they're actually great but mm-hmm. now you're diminishing what they're doing because it looks like they're getting a free ticket and being pushed to the front of the line it's not a it's not about equal results it's about equal opportunity in my right. humble opinion and they've right. gotten it- away from that and the and um, John Boyega, who plays Finn, uh, the black guy in the new Star Wars trilogy, um, he had actually come out recently, and I'm sure he's I'm sure he's walked these comments back, but basically <laughs> saying like 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 they didn't give my character anything to do, like like they kind of set him up to like be a force user, be a Jedi or something, but they ended like here the the okay the black character in Star Wars here is his story. They said he was a stormtrooper. Wow, you know, great, great. And not even that, he, he was a stormtrooper. Before that, he was a janitor. Like, come on, that, that's what you're giving him as his backstory? <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and that's Disney, that's not me saying it. That's literally in the story, he was a janitor on the Death Star. Like, like and, then, and then they, like, and, and there's another black character that they meet throughout. And guess what, she's a stormtrooper as well. So you're telling me if you're black, you're not gonna be anything other than a stormtrooper. You're not gonna be a Jedi, you're not gonna have force powers. And he came back and was bashing bashing this you know uh, less than a year ago but i guarantee you he's walked those comments back because now he's like oh yeah i'd love to return as that character in the future you, well, you know you know they got to him and kyle am i wrong i, I remember reading that because apparently and and you can believe this or not it's, it's it's in the realm of rumor right now i think but with some support the last film the abrams film was a, 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 intended to be a significantly longer than it was at release and they cut out a subplot which kind of reference gave him a lot more to do and yes. referenced possibly some force uh abilities on it on his behalf so it, mm-hmm. I, I yeah it's i they just have mutilated this I'm, I'm curious kyle uh what do you make of there are some again this is these are rumors but there's a bit of a civil war going on at disney over uh mm-hmm. star wars between john favreau and dave filoni and then kathleen kennedy the the woman who was kind of installed at when they mm-hmm. bought the franchise to uh to uh, over the future of it like how it's going to be run whether it's going to be like mandalorian where luke skywalker is still a badass and he's not you know this disillusioned you know vietnam veteran who's lost his marbles uh what is what do you put any credence into those those rumors about that yeah a- absolutely and you can and you can definitely see that the kathleen kennedy in that side is a lot more of the woke trying to get the the younger kids into yeah. it and, and the favreau filoni side is let's harken back to what star wars was let's Let's use real sets. Let's use um, imagery that reminds everybody of what Star Wars was at one point. Um, and, and, you know, there's a slang term that everybody probably knows. It's called fan service, right? Where, you know, in these movies, they add these little like, ha, do you see that little thing we put in there? Ha ha. Like you, you can do that in a corny way or you can do that in a legitimate way, which I think the Mandalorian uh, legitimately has done stuff and added it into the story that reminds us of stuff we've seen in the past. Um, like 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 sets and planets and, and aliens and all that kind of stuff. And, and the other side, they're kind of stuck in this, in they're going to die in this hill of this sequel trilogy and these characters. And now they're trying to go back like hundreds of years in history and create a whole new novel franchise and a comic book. And like, it, it's just, they're, they're trying too hard and they're trying to, to be too smart about it. But they're definitely, and they're definitely very too, too smug about it. And, and they're, like I said, they're trying to wedge that that divide almost saying like, well, if you don't like this stuff that we're doing that, you know, you don't, you don't believe in X, Y, and Z, but um, uh, yeah, unfortunately I think that's what is going on is that, is that civil war. But I mean, I think the numbers are going to show for yourself, which one of those is, is the right way to go. Guys, I want to tell you about our good friends at Blue Chew. That's right. High five, Blue Chew. Yeah, uh, dude. America. We love American boners, man. Hard, rock hard, veiny boners. I don't like you how know? you just stare me right what? in the eye while you're talking Johnny, about rock hard Johnny, are boners. you in or out? If you're in, you make eye contact with me <laughs> after you take your Blue Chew. On, you're we, the top. You, know, you know what we like to do on this show? We like to do a boner chicken, right? <laughs> all, we all take a Blue Chew, and then we see who gets the weirdest boner <laughs> at the weirdest moment, and it's all brought to you by Blue Chew. That's right. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable 
tablet at a fraction of the cost, okay? Anytime, all the time, when the opportunity arises, Blue Chew comes. It's like Batman. Throw up the bat signal. Bam! You got bat boners all over the place, okay? The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, bang, pow, pang, you are, you prescribe. I want to, dude, sometimes I want to interview that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the face of Blue Chew. Like, dude, how's your boners, bro? Magically. Okay, you just you go to bluechew.com, you uh, consult one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, bang, you get your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. No visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting lines. Blue Chew tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped directly to your door in a discreet package, okay? It's just that simple. So here's what we want you to do, man, all right? If you could benefit from a little extra help when it comes time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free with the use of promo code TINFOIL at checkout. Just $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code TINFOIL for more detail and more safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the show. So let's get into uh, some of these notes you sent me. Uh, Let's start with Star Wars. And, and basically what's going on with this intergalactic totalitarianism uh, that you, and I'm sure I butchered that because I flunked first grade. <laughs> but uh, if you want to get into any of that, I'd love to hear a little bit of your thoughts on that. Absolutely. You know, I, I need to teach a college course, you know, intergalactic totalitarianism. It sounds really smart, doesn't it? Tota- it's got a lot of... Totalitarianism. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> it's funny, you say Tartaria and totalitarianism. <laughs> 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 same, yeah, same kind of thing there. So, so really what I'm trying, what I'm doing here um, is in Star Wars, in, in the prequel trilogy, something that kind of gets lost in the fact that the movies weren't really that great is a really great plot about Hold on, hold on. What'd you just say? That the on oh, the prequels are you talking about? You're not talking about the old. Okay, the no, prequels. The, okay. the originals are are the Bible. No, we're good okay. there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I but I will say, you know, talking about the newer movies, I think a lot of people are now looking more favorably on the prequels just in the lens of this new stuff, right? Like maybe it still isn't that great, but it's not as big of a pile of shit as this yeah. other, you know. It's a cohesive here. vision, like you said. And, right. I, and I think Revenge of the Sith stands on its own as a good film. But. Yeah, I, I, I do too. And, and really what it, what it lays out is how we got from like a, a, a nice republic to a totalitarian communist socialist government. And it, it really lays out all these tracks to get there. And we can kind of hit a, hit a few of, the, of those beats because, you know, when I watched these movies as a kid, you really don't pick up on some of the, some of the subtlety of this. But then you look at what happens in our world and like, holy shit, this is very, very similar. So um, in the very first prequel movie, The Phantom Menace, you know, it, and here's the kind of the funny thing, you know, everybody loves those, the Star Wars crawl, right? That goes up the screen at the very beginning, kind of sets the stage. Mm-hmm. This is where we are. This is what's happening. That, that first movie, The Phantom Menace, it starts out, it says, hey, there's a trade, dis- there's a trade dispute about taxation between these planets, which I think a lot of people kind of that t- turned them off where they're like, what the hell? This is Star Wars. What are you, what are you bringing all this crap into it? But I think it's, but it's very important because there was this trade dispute um, because the government was taxing people more, which I mean, obviously everybody, everybody hates more taxes. So sure enough, this um, federation of, let's just call it big business, right? So, you know, your Google's Amazon, whatever the, the big business, this trade federation they start blockading this planet as kind of like a um, not letting anything in and out, basically saying to the government, listen, you need to meet our demands or we're going to we're going to do some shit. So they blockade this planet. They invade this planet. Um, their only goal is just to get the government to rescind on these on these tax restrictions. Right. But what you come to find out is that that trade federation is being controlled by this guy named Darth Sidious, who we all know he's the emperor in the original trilogy, but he's going by this shadow figure called Darth Sidious. On the other side, on, on the flip side, he's also a senator in this Galactic Republic. So he's kind of playing both sides of the situation. He's starting to manipulate a war between these, these factions um, to get them, uh, to get them A, confused, to get them um, worked up in all these Senate procedures and, and, and bogged down in all this stuff so he can find ways to consolidate power into himself. Like the, the parallel I, I, I 
use with him is if anybody's seen like the House of Cards series, uh, you know, Kev Kevin Spacey, great all around dude right there. But um, <laughs> <laughs> the that, best. all the all the allegations aside and all the people that never made it to, to, to the court aside. Um, <laughs> It's, it's a story of a guy who, who maneuvers his way up through politics, right? He's a senator, becomes vice president, becomes president. Same thing here. Um, he, he's a senator and he, he's like, you know what? Um, I don't really, he, and, he's, and he's convincing all these people. He's like, you know what? I don't feel like the dude in charge right now is really strong enough to deal with this oncoming threat. He's like, I wonder if maybe we could elect somebody stronger. And he's like, hey, you, can you, uh, can you put forth this motion in the Senate to get rid of this guy? And then, you know, sure enough, that happens. And sure enough, he gets elected. You know, what, what do you, how, how about that? So he finds a way, you know, because he's manipulating this whole situation to begin with, and he weasels his way into this chancellor or president role of the Senate, what have you. So uh, on and on it goes, and he's manipulating this war. It becomes basically a civil war between these, these two factions, this, this government republic and these um, planets that have kind of broken off. And... All, 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 all in all, he's trying to find more and more ways to consolidate power into himself, right? Like you see this all the time in politics. They find more and more ways, especially in wartime. I mean, you, uh, they find ways to stay in power longer. They find ways to get more emergency powers, et cetera. And that's literally what he does. He, he gets the, he's, he's granted emergency powers, okay? Because he needs to create an army and all this stuff during wartime. And, and he says the classic line, which, you know, everybody gets, I, I get a kick out of watching. He says, you know, thank you for granting me these emergency powers. As soon as this threat is over, I'm going to return it. Like, you know, <laughs> bull, bullshit, bullshit. Yeah. We, we, that, that, never, that never goes away. So uh, it, it kind of goes, goes on and on. And then, um, he, so he creates this clone army, okay? And, you know, cloning, that, that takes us down a whole nother rabbit hole. We won't have time for, for all that kind of stuff. But he creates this clone army. Um, to fight this ongoing, ongoing threat. And he implants in these clones uh, a microchip. Huh, microchipping. Has anybody heard about microchipping recently? I don't know. <laughs> so what happens is at a certain point in time, um, the Jedi figure out what's really going on. And they say, hey, dude, you need to step down. And he's like, no. And they fight him. And he, he wipes him out, et, et cetera. And then he goes and cries to the Senate. And this is like the, the here's like the, the capital riot of Star Wars right here. He, these Jedi come and he fights them, whatever. And he's like, oh, the Jedi attacked me. I'm scarred and disfigured like AOC in this terrible attack <laughs> that's, on, that's ongoing here. Um, so he's like, you know what? We got we to gotta get rid of all these Jedi. I mean, they almost killed me. I mean, look, oh, look what happened. Damn. You know, isn't it? Yeah, I just I just thought of that AOC one right on the spot there. No, that's guys. great <laughs> because she just she got busted lying so much about that. They want this like January, this January 6th thing to be something. It's got nothing. But then I go, what is the psyop of that? What right. is the psyop of this thing falling apart? And to me, and I, I'm being honest with you, man, I'm really watching this like this thing going, let's all run to the GOP. Let's all run to the right. They have America first. While you have this Florida governor who is like doing all the things that the conspiracy theorists love, but a lot of people aren't talking about like he is pro censorship of any criticism of Israel. And you know, it's like, again, like, you know, our stance on this whole thing. It's like, love Jews, love Israelis, have problem with governments. Okay. But the, mm -hmm. to, to have a, a powerful political figure censoring Americans for a foreign government is, is kind of crazy. And the way everyone's just clamoring for Trump when he was obviously a Zionist. I mean, that Dan Crenshaw's a Zionist, that uh, um, Trump is a Zionist. This, this governor, Florida governor is a Zionist. So it's very interesting. Like, what is the game? And they've always, I've always, they, you always heard, they throw you a Democrat when you're mad at the Republicans, right? Right, right. But the Republicans are always doing the work of the big businesses and all that stuff. And here we are with this theater of the election and all that stuff going on. And how now everybody's clamoring for it's like if you really wanted to let, let's let's you know and it's my biggest problem with the um 
with the left. It's like, I, you don't have to like Trump. I don't care. Beat him like a pinata for all I give a shit. Okay. Mm -hmm. You just don't tell me that, that Biden is the answer. You can, you can be liberal and hate the Democrats. It's mm -hmm. totally fine. It's totally fine. And, uh, I just like, if you take a look at you, like, if you really want, if you really want to destroy, like, what used to be the anti-war movement is just take their party and fill it with scumbag satanic pedophiles and then watch everybody start to run away from that. Right. All right. right. So let's get back into it. That was a long it, tirade. It, it, Sorry about no, that. No, no, that, that's perfect. I mean, I mean, talk about, talk about the right left paradigm, right? I mean, same kind of thing going on here. You have these two battling sides and it's the, the war was never, neither side was ever meant to win this war. It was just a huge distraction for him to gather up all this freaking power. Like there, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who won all these different battles. It, it, it was completely, completely pointless. Like, you know, think about anything like war on drugs, Vietnam, all this stuff. Like it didn't really matter. It was a huge distraction for a lot of other stuff. So the, the whole, basically the Capitol riot thing happens. They said, we need to get rid of the Jedi. You know, they tried to kill me. So then he enacts this microchip and all the clones, they kill all the Jedi. Um, there's basically nobody left. But then the last thing Palpatine does is he basically, you know, and, and you and you hear this all the time. I'm sure everybody's seen that interview with uh, Yuri Bezmenov, that that KGB guy from the '80s yes. that came over to America. He said, you know, all these people that have gone along with the communist plan, you know, pushing the propaganda, they're the ones that get lined up against the wall and shot. So Palpatine sends Darth Vader, who just just got crowned Darth Vader, to take out all those trade federation big business leaders. Because now they know too much. And so he takes them all out too, right? Oh, shit. And, you know, so it, it's, so, it's so convenient. It's in such a great parallel with, with what happens. And then, you know, so, so then, you know, that's really the end of that. But, you know, Palpatine then has control. And then what he really does over the next 20, 30 years, he walls, he, he literally, he um, metaphorically walls himself off from the world, right? Um, and you see that with DC, right? They're putting up all these big barricades and stuff physically shielding he did it more in a in a, in a you know a, a, di a different sense but same kind of thing right he's like i got this power i'm just gonna hide away now and hold on to all this power and you know screw everybody else and and then you kind of then you get into the original trilogy and, and so on and so forth yeah dude yeah it's so interesting man it's like think about when all these movies came out and how they saw all this shit happening right and it's just i mean and it's all there, dude. It's all there right. pointed out for you to see. And like, does anybody see it? And right. Yeah, obviously you do. But how many people, if they actually <laughs> broke this down, would be like, right. holy shit. This is exactly and, <laughs> what's happening right now. And then, Johnny, to talk about, you know, Revenge of the Sith at the very end. There, there's a lot of really great symbolism that happens as this all culminates into this empire. So uh, Anakin Skywalker becomes Darth Vader. He fights against Obi-Wan in this lava planet. Uh, and it's a pretty cool battle. But really you see a bunch of things happening at once um, visually. So for one, you see the destruction of like industry because they're on this lava planet and you see all this mechanical stuff breaking and smashing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, at the same time, the emperor is fighting against Yoda in the Senate hall, literally throwing these Senate pods at each other, like metaphorically destroying yeah. the Senate in a physical and metaphorical sense. And then at the same time, you're seeing the death of the Jedi Knight religion. Right, so you see industry, right. politics, religion, um, and then even a, a, a socioeconomic, you know, um, emotional stuff. Right, like Anakin almost kills his wife to become this Anakin person. So you see all of these things culminate in in this totalitarian government all at the same time, and it's pretty wild how it yeah, all and, works out like that. And Anakin is meant to be the best of them. You know, he, you know, you are the chosen one. It's right. He was an aspirational figure that they perverted. They twisted his motives and his mind. And right. Yeah. I, I. Yeah. There are so many parallels here, especially. I think the the starkest one, the most obvious, is is the war, the use of war powers by Palpatine. You know, mm -hmm. there's there's a yeah. threat. There's a great threat to the country. I I temporarily, just for now, need you know some executive orders. I got to do mm -hmm. some executive orders, guys. Just boring clerical stuff that when it'll go back to normal when the threat's over. Yep. And and I think that's the thing that not just in the past but in the future we got to be on the lookout for. You know, it, even if you want to right. get like blue beam or something, we just we cannot for any reason let an executive or head of state or even even a, a congressional body 
take consume powers that just you know aren't outlined for them I, i'm suspicious right. anytime I, I see an executive order come across and you want to hear a great uh sam you'll you'll appreciate this you want to hear a great george w bush reference at the end of that movie there yeah. um so anakin is fighting against about to fight against obi-wan and he says if you're not with me you're my enemy and oh, what did bush snap. say he said, if you're not if you're either with us or against us in the war on terror oh snaps yeah. and it's it, it just like I hate to tell everybody, but you know, there is a there is a way in which radical Islam in in the Middle East is the Jedi resistance, if you really think about it. I mean, that's very hard to say, especially since we've all had friends or I know I, you know when I did a USO, I went to Afghanistan, I went to the base that's had everybody from my home home area there. While my brother was in upstate New York going to one of the guy's brother's funeral who had died in Afghanistan, his funeral back home. But it's like, if you, if you look at like from uh, the Middle Eastern's point of view, who's the good guys? Who's right. the bad guys? Who is right. the empire? If you, if you reverse, if you go back in time to our war on independ for independence, who is the empire in that scenario? Britain. Who are the Jedis? The Americans. So it's just like, and then you get into religion and all that stuff. It's it's like perspective and all that, the demonization, the giant right. weaponry sent to destroy the local population and what we've done. I mean, that's us. That you, is you know, us. And it, it goes even a little deeper maybe than, I, I'm not sure I agree with. I mean, that's the sentiment that got Bill Maher's show canceled politically incorrect in the 90s. You know, him saying that, you know, you can say what you want about these people, but they're not cowards, you know, because people were saying, oh, this cowardly act, you know, by by the and he was right. They weren't. Uh, but well, I think of the emotion. It's, you know, for me, it's called reading the room. There but is what, a, yeah, yeah, a you're time right. to say but what, that. But what, time not to yeah. Say. But what you're saying there, because the Jedi in, in the films are, in a sense, religious fundamentalists. Now, they, I think they would object right. to the use of the word religious, but they are fundamentalists right. of a sort of a spiritual order. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I guess you could compare them to. And, and, and one of the things that happened during that prequel trilogy that kind of um, was really interesting to me was during this huge war, they basically conscripted the Jedi into military service for the yeah. Republic, right? Yeah. So, so they're supposed to be these like Zen masters, like basically it's supposed to be like this monk-like society, right? They're supposed to be in touch with the force, really understanding and meditating on what's really happening. But Palpatine um, had it in such a way that he had them out fighting all these battles that they weren't able to, to go back to the, the real truth of what they should have been seeing. I mean, if they would have had the time to meditate and all this stuff, they would have really seen the manipulation that was going on. But he had them distracted in so many different areas that they, they weren't able to do that. And, and they even got to the point where, um, I'm just going to call him Samuel L. Jackson because that's his name in the movie. Um, he, he, <laughs> he, 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 basically, he basically says, he's like, you know, I feel like our ability to use the force is diminished because of, of, of they were uh, spread out in all these different areas. And Yoda's like, well, and Samuel Jackson's like, well, we got to tell the Senate. We got to, and, and Yoda, and this is a really great, like, you know, art of war type phrase here. Yoda says, no, we can't tell the Senate that we, we, we our powers are diminished. Otherwise they'll see us as weak, right? Like when you're, when you're weak, act strong, kind of go to, back to the art yeah. of war stuff. But they, they, they were so clouded. There was really this dark side cloud that was clouding their judgment, that was clouding everything they did intentionally and they and they weren't able to get back to the roots of what they really should have been doing was that meditation and, and knowledge of the force kind of stuff these were supposed to be the watchers right i mean these were the, right yeah. right and almost kind of like you think of like 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 the catholic church right like there's been so much terrible shit that's gone on with the catholic church they've really gone away from what they really should what they really should be fundamentally because they're doing all this other you know stuff but anyways that's kind of that's no, a little I'm bit about that now and i just want know. to clarify my thing and if we take a deeper look at Al-Qaeda and ISIS on how they are not Jedis, we realize they too are on the payroll of the empire and they are right. controlled. Opposition. Yeah. And I think you said the radicals. I don't know if we want to say that because I mean, the radicals are throwing gays off of buildings and stuff like the really the hardcores that I know well, that's a minority. I, but... I, I am talking about those who resist foreigners on their soil. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. We could get into anything and yeah, whatever you want. I think there's you, a distinction you between want what clip you just... me and make me feel bad. I mean, make me look like a bad guy. I'm fine with that because it's the truth. 
I just don't know if that's the right word, there. though. The radicals. I think you mean like the the sort of the the freedom fighters or something, but not the. I don't know. The radicals are the people. The radical well, by I mean, belief. Uh, and the radicals are are in fact the uh, are paid for, you know, and supplied by the right. fucking international banking cabal so yeah. maybe that word was used wrong there and for that i say sorry but not sorry because i fucking 100 percent believe that if you're over somewhere else's place and they're defending their lands they're not the terrorist we are the terrorists we're in places we should not be for th things and it's not about oil i'm sorry because we find tons of oil here and this is Sam Tripoli speaking. So if you want, I'm all about that action. If anyone's got a fucking problem with it, come get some. Okay? No, I think that, that sentiment is the sentiment that launched the Tea Party movement. It was during the debates and I for the 2008 cycle, the Republican debates, when Ron Paul just got up there and said, why don't we listen to, to why they're fighting us, why they're killing us? It's because we're over there. And that, yeah, right. you know, that was the first time you ever heard that on stage, especially post 9-11. Uh, and and I, and that I really think that's the birth of the Tea Party movement and and this sort of counter. And that's one thing I'll tell you about the, the right that you respect their ability to pull their energy, money, and profits uh, a, a, out of right. out of the system to create the Tea Party to the point that the Republicans are okay, 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 we're listening. The left can't do that. They are so consumed with hatred of the right that they will fucking step in line and follow complete scumbags who have hijacked their party. You know, they just, they just hate Republicans because most of these guys are in their thirties and forties and that are leading the party, listening to 20 year olds who have yep. lived no life talking about idealistic ways of living. And it's just like, dude, you can tell me about how hard it is to be black, how hard it is to be gay, how hard it is to be a woman. Just don't tell me that white men have fucking everything handed to them because some of them are born into worlds of shit. And when you don't recognize that, you, you fucking become the same oppressed. Listen to me, man. You know, if you look at Rockfin, right, how many conspiracy people, how many political talk people are over there, right? But you know how hard it is to get somebody from the left or, or a woke comedian to go on Rockfin? Because they see all these fucking quote unquote left wing fucking crazy people fucking over there. And they, they don't, it's like, yeah, so what? There's people don't see it the way you are, but you're welcome into the conversation as well. And it's just, you know, the people who are supposed to be open-minded are really the, the most closed-minded of all of them. And it's crazy, you know, like I know a lot of people that have, hold like leftist, liberal, whatever kind of point of views. And you know, they're, they're really good people. They just don't realize how far left that party has moved, you know. And, and you kind of feel bad for them because they've always been taught, well, this is what I vote. I vote this, I vote this. And they don't see a lot of that crazy because they just, they, they choose not to. And it's kind of unfortunate. And it works both ways, too. You know, yeah, and what's gonna happen to the right? Because this is what happens every fucking time. Once a movement starts growing, it gets hijacked by opportunists that drag it to the extremes, which is what's being done right now with uh, the left. And you're slowly starting to see it creep back into the right with a uh, uh, right to choose versus right to life, uh, anti gay sentiment. And it's like, no, man, live and let live and keep the government off out of your bank account and out of your body. Stay there and you'll be fine. But you're going to get fucking seduced by by crazies that tell you what you want, that are just super charismatic and will bring you. And next thing you know, you're, you're fucking hating gays and women are in back alleys doing shady ass shit. So right. that's kind of where we are. I'm sure I'm pissing everybody off See, in this episode, but <laughs> I don't care. See, but it makes it seem like that, like with Marvel coming out with a Captain America being gay, it makes you get mad at that. It makes you seem like a homophobe for being mad that Captain America has to be gay now. When I'm like, I'm not mad about that, but why Captain America? Why can't you just make a new character? Like, yeah, imagine I mean, I'm just a keep making characters gay too. It's just like it was the Green Lantern. Now it's Captain America. It's like, dude, you gays are the most creative people out there, right? They're super exactly. creative. Come up with your own gay guy. And he doesn't have to be annoying gay either. It's like, could be cool gay. It's like, dude, I, and I bang dudes in the ass. Okay, that's who I am. But I also fight evil. Right? I mean, why can't we have that? 
Why does it have to be like, hey, dude, you know that guy you loved? Dude, he's barebacking dudes in fucking shady hotels right now. It's like, no, dude, that's not that dude. Make your own guy up. Make and it's the same guy. thing. And it's the same thing with lesbians. Why do they always got to be all butchy? Why can't there be a hot lesbian? Like yeah, a I'm really hot lesbian. That. But why do I need to know the sexuality of my crime fighters? Right. 100%. <laughs> like, why do I give a shit? If they like, let's have a, let's have a conversation first. Like, and I'll, I'll know if you're an asshole, if you're not. I, if you're an asshole, you're an asshole. I don't care if you're a gay, white, straight, black. If you're an asshole, you're an asshole. Right. Let's start there. Like, let's talk first before you have to tell me all your pronouns. Why can't why can't we do that? You have to preface everything with this. This is like great. Yeah, I'm, I couldn't agree more. I don't know why it matters. How old are you, Kyle? I'm 36. I'll tell you what. Yeah. I'm 36. I was born in eight, 1984 and we're still living in 1984, which is kind of weird. <laughs> that yeah. is kind of crazy. But it I, is weird. I, I, uh, you know, like you're you're starting to enter a time where like your body overthrows the dictator. It's not about getting laid all the time and everything <laughs> like that, right? Because when you're super young, that's all you care about. You wake up in the morning going, how can I bury this bone in, in somebody's yard, right? That's what it's all about. But as you get older and, and like, Kyle, you're now going to enter this place where you, you're going to start making your money, your career is going to explode because that's what you're focusing on now. Right. Like, but, and at some point it's like anybody in their forties that still identifies by their sexuality is just a cr crazy to me because it li literally does not matter. I mean, it, it's fun to care about getting laid. Obviously it's great, but it's not the biggest concern. Like when you're in your twenties and it's like such a giant big part of your life, if you're a 40, you're still identified by your sexuality. I just don't understand it. I don't understand why people are, uh, define themselves by the five minutes they do in the bedroom. Right. And in the, in the last Star Wars movie, that episode nine, they made sure at the very end of the movie to have a, a same sex kiss between two women, <laughs> right? Between two minor characters that nobody even knew about. They made sure to spend five seconds on screen with that, right? Like it, they, had, they, they basically had this checklist of all the stuff they had to put in there. That's the last one they checked it off. Hey, we're good to go. Boom, movie's in the can, send it out. Couldn't agree more, dude. Couldn't agree more. So let's get into some, uh, with all the news of Fauci, Bill Gates, being thrown under the bus. By the way, this is all part of a script that they did in assimilation that yep. they ran for, uh, I think Jay Dyer put out the, the best quote about it. This was all part of, let me see what he said real quick. Uh, he basically broke it down right here. Let me see where he said it. Okay. He said, basically, uh, the, the spars war document said they burn front men like Fauci and obviously Bill Gates. This is all part of their, their war games that they're playing. But let's get into the parallels between vaccines and COVID parallels in Star Wars. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, and this was crazy when I look, I'll, I'll have to send you guys the picture of this, but like 12 years ago, okay, so talking 2009, this Star Wars animated series had this little one-off episode about a, a crazy scientist who I'm telling you, this dude, this dude looks like Fauci. I got I'll send you this picture. But anyways, he, he's, he's secretly. Um, I can make it so you can share your screen. Actually, let me just, uh, if you want to do that. Uh, okay. You should be able to share your screen now so we can see it. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Okay. All right. One second here. Okay, let me show you this here. Okay. Okay, can you guys see this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it does look like him. I mean, it does look like him. It's like a caricature, yeah. <laughs> and this was 2009, so um, if, you, if you think about it, 2009, the whole, uh, what was it, the swine flu thing was going on, right? So kind of interesting that was happening at the same time as this. But anyways, this mad scientist um, intentionally releases a virus from a laboratory that was originally waterborne virus that he wanted to make airborne, okay? So just that in of itself is a little, is a little nuts for Star Wars and especially like an animated series, right? That is mostly geared towards kids. So I thought that was, that was pretty interesting, especially in terms of everything going on now. 
not that there was anything devious about it. I just happened to make that, that connection there. But, but the interesting thing about that was the cure for this virus was naturally occurring like herbs and plants, you know, which think about, think about COVID. What's the, what's the cure? What's the treatment that should be is, you know, the, the hydrochloroquine, the zinc, the vitamin C, the vitamin D, the all, all this kind of, the sun, right? Natural, natural ingredients is what this was saying was the, the vaccine or the cure. And I'll tell you what, at the beginning of the episode, um, and, and this is called the Clone Wars series, if anybody wants to check it out. Um, at the beginning of each one of these episodes, they show this little phrase up on the screen, almost kind of like, uh, this is a phrase which means something in the episode going forward, almost like what you'd see on like a fortune cookie. But basically what it says on the screen before this episode aired, it said, it said, fear is the virus. Fear is the virus. I'm like, you got to be freaking kidding me because that's that's what's happening right now. Everybody's so everybody was so scared of this thing over the past year, um, not not willing to go outside of their house, had to Clorox wipe everything down, had to wear three masks, all this all this garbage. And then they're will they, they're willing to shed that fear to go get an experimental, you know, whatever in their veins, which I think is completely ridiculous. So that's a little that's uh, the 100 well, percent dude 100 percent about the fear stuff that's all it's, it that is and you know it's so interesting because now as all this stuff's coming out about masks and all that stuff um you still see these commercials that were filmed a month ago mm -hmm. that when the narrative was much different running and you're like oh you're you're lying to us right now and i feel really bad because somebody worked hard on that took money for being a scumbag, but right. it's like, we're just laughing at everything you're saying. Oh, don't forget the social distance. Oh, everyone knows that doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. It's, 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 it's hilarious. And you know, my, my wife is watching like some of those stupid medical shows like Grey's Anatomy. Right. And they, they recorded these, ep they filmed these episodes at the beginning of the pandemic. Okay. So now they're airing right now. So she's seeing all this crap. She's like, oh my God, here we go with the ventilators, with the everybody's dying. Everybody that's, oh, even if you're healthy, you're dying. Like all this bullshit fear stuff that, you know, even she's like, come on, this is just, we, we get it. We get it. You know, you've been pushing this for a year. Half of this stuff, especially now, half of this stuff, uh, what you're pushing isn't even right anymore. And like, it's, it's hilarious. It's more of a comedy show now because you're, you're, you're putting yourself out there in front street and it's all BS. It's hilarious. Mm -hmm. And here in California, I don't know if you know, but June 16th or June 17th, that's the big day. That's the day everything goes back to normal. It literally, that's the day. It literally says it, on June 17th, you don't have to wear a mask anymore. It's like, what? Just, they just picked the day. That's the day. Let's go. And that's Israel it. and I think uh, Europe now stop passports. Um, it's just a matter of time before here, before vaccine passports go away. It better. I mean, California yeah. will be the last because all the conformist rich kids move there because they want to be cool kids and they'll, they'll conform into the beginning. And you know, it's like I said earlier, like punk rock, these people were never punk rock. They were all, they were all faux, po, faux rock, fake rock, you know, and you're seeing it right now. And it's just like, I think we're entering a very, very interesting time where I think we have a chance at this. I, I that's my, my honest belief, man, is we have a chance at just seizing back the narrative. I mean, if if after the JFK assassination, you know, um, the Gulf of Tonkin, 9-11, uh, weapons of mass destruction, the Vegas shooting, Russian collusion, and now this thing, and you still watch the media, I don't even want to save you. Right. I, I hope you get eaten by zombies. That's what I hope happens. Right. You can become an all-you-can-eat buffet for the zombies, okay? I don't want anything to do with you. I'm not interested in saving you. You can just stay at home and pump yourself full of vaccines all fucking day and just enjoy hatred and people and everybody's out to get you and oppression and all that stuff. All the narrative, right. I think, is just like starting to fall to the side, and I think we're about to enter a wonderful place. So let's get into some more... Well, real quick on that point, you know, what you mentioned about, you know, we may have a chance here. You know, I think the deep state and all these p people over the past year, um, I, I think basically what they've been doing is like the Tech Mobile Hail Mary. Every day, Tech Mobile Hail Mary. 
fourth and 35. They they know that they're in a position, going back to that, you know, uh, art of war, they know that they're in a position of weakness, so they're acting strong. But I think everybody's starting to see through that a little bit, at least, well, I wouldn't say everybody, but I think more and more people every day are starting to wake up and just want their basic freedoms back. You know, not not to the level that of, of ways we understand it, but people just want their basic stuff back, right? They want to be able to drop their kids off at school without wearing a mask. They want to be able to go to a restaurant and not have to wear a mask and then sit down five seconds later. People just want that basic stuff, you know? I just, I'm blown away by everyone's like, man, it was great to be in a restaurant. I'm so happy to be here. Think about what you're saying. Yeah. Think about what you're saying. You're excited yeah. to eat inside a restaurant. That's right. where our life is right now. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, I went out to a, a bar the other night to watch a concert and you know they finally got rid of all the masks, no employees are wearing masks. And I'm like, this feels weird, but it's fucked up that it feels weird. Yeah. It should not feel weird. This is normal life. We did this yeah. every single day of our entire lives. And now it feels weird, even if we don't think it sh should. It's, it's a whole, you know, backwards. No, dude, that's backwards a great thing. point. And I'm probably going to steal that for my comedy act. I just need you Shut to up. know that. Absolutely. Um, you, you got it. A new bad, you, bat, bat. Go on, Xavier. I was going to say, now just imagine kids, little kids, that how they're going to feel. That they've, they've been doing this for a year, two years. They're going to be scared out of their mind. They're going to be walking around with wifeys by themselves, like those freak terms. A lot of freak terms are going to, term freaks are going to pop up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to hurt. It's and just think about mentality. what a year and a half of your life means when you're three years old. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's half your life. Yeah. So half your life, they've seen people walking around like fucking Mortal Kombat, right? Right. Fucking mass over there. And now everyone's got the mass off. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's and, they, and, and they've been and they've been seeing their parents working from home ignoring them doing this or that so they have a, all these kind of all these complexes and it's 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 terrible for the kids dude i just want to kick all their asses okay let's get into the final two things uh the new bad batch series what is that so okay so this is really interesting it's a new series on 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 disney plus but but don't support disney let me just throw that out there i'll, I'll listen to my podcast i'll break it down for you okay um so what it is basically we so the emperor created all these clones, right, uh, to basically build up his new empire. But during this cloning process, some stuff went wrong on a few of them. So there's there's several clones that whenever he issued this order, hey, all the clones, boom, flip the switch. Now you got to kill the Jedi. A handful of these clones, the pro the programming did not work on them. You know, just think about that phrase right there. The programming did not work on them. So they're kind of off on their own trying to fight against this new new government. Be, because it, it didn't it didn't work on them right like I, I feel like the bad batch you know i had a podcast the other day i said we we in the truth community we are the bad batch we are not we're not cut from the same mold we see things in a different way we don't buy into the programming we're willing to think for ourselves and it's a very direct parallel for what's going on there but anyways th you're starting to see and it's and kind of tagging into this totalitarian government this takes place right as that empire is starting to to, to grow and they're enacting what's called a chain code throughout the galaxy, which is like a, a, an intergalactic ID. So if you don't have this ID, you can't go on a you can't go on a, uh, an airship. You can't go buy sell buy sell goods, etc. I'm like I'm like my God, the, the timing. I mean, this just came out a few weeks ago. The timing of that with with you talking about the pa vaccine passports and all that, you know, you, that that can't be a coincidence that that is is happening is happening right now. Is that starting to program us for for that kind of environment i couldn't agree you know? more dude i think everything when you have five companies now i think it's down to four that own all the media it is not hard to coordinate this shit and that's right. what my friend brian callen can't come to grips with when right. when you you know i we lived in hollywood i don't do it anymore but when i used to pitch comedy show uh you know pilots and stuff like that they'd be like what we're looking for and, and what that is is like the email they got from somebody above them telling them what they're looking for and that email was sent to that person which was sent to that was sent from a boardroom of a small group of people that are on all these different boardrooms a great example of this now is viacom viacom used to be all these different channels mtv comedy central spike tv now one group of people are programming all of those channels yep. one group of people so it is not hard to get a message to fucking 
be dispersed through all these different quote unquote independent freaking channels. Right. And that is what happened. And that is why Kyle shows like yours, mine, the, you know, all these other stuff. That's why you're seeing YouTube channels and comedians being fucking attacked right now because those are, are those are mediums that can be created without banker money. Mm hmm. Right. And you're competing against banker money and what they want done. And right. Hollywood, Disney, they stopped making art for people. They are now making art for banks mm -hmm. and the people running everything. Right. And that is why nobody's watching their shit anymore. You want to hear something really funny talking about uh, censorship on, on YouTube. You'll get a kick out of this. So talking about this whole intergalactic totalitarianism thing, I, I put out this presentation a few months ago where I did a whole PowerPoint on all this stuff, right? So I post this to YouTube. I call it intergalactic totalitarianism. Well, uh, Disney right away takes it down. They said copyright violation, et cetera. Mind you, I used clips. All, all clips are already on YouTube. So it wasn't like I was just screen grabbing this shit from the movies, okay? So they take it down, okay? I repost it and I call it intergalactic diversity and inclusion and it's fine <laughs> you i mean i mean you can't you can't make this shit up you know and it got and it got through the algorithm <laughs> dude i i'm 100 dude 100 that's what they're doing now i that's think we have to start it, and it's i think we have to start weaponizing their own algorithm like tr directing it against them putting in keywords like woke keywords into our keywords and, and our, mm -hmm. our, our titles you know and tell tell the listeners about because I, I really think a lot of this is just all it's all ai like recognition yeah. of cues like words voice recognition and shit like that every episode of tim fall hat for now on will be called why why people suck yeah I, I really <laughs> think i really think there's an opportunity there to, to kind of turn it against them because then they're going to show it to everybody you know how it is that you get blasted with that shit on youtube yeah. and on social media that woke shit it's everywhere and i think right. there's an opportunity for somebody to kind of i'm with you dude cuck it I'm up with you Kyle, man, you came, you saw, you kicked a whole lot of ass, brother. I appreciate you stepping up. We had a guy cancel and you stepped right in and knocked it out of the park. And I appreciate Johnny and Xavier for showing up at the, and uh, doing this because we put this together at last second. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if anybody has any problems with something I said, uh, let me know. I ain't afraid of that. You can come on and tell me why I'm an asshole. I have no problems with that. I stand by everything I said. And I will say probably about a thousand more times on the show by the time we do our last episode. So uh, I appreciate you again. Kyle, one more time, please tell them where they can find you. Sure. You can find me. Uh, the podcast is called Conspiracy in the Force. You can find it anywhere you find podcasts. And then you can find me on uh, Twitter and, and Instagram at conspiracy underscore Kyle. And it's conspiracy with a K. So maybe that helped me kind of get, get through some of the censorship bullshit. And, and within the next few weeks, yeah, like you mentioned at the beginning of the show, Sam, um, I joined the Rockfin Network, um, which I'm really excited about rolling out some exclusive content here in, in the next few weeks. So stay tuned to my social media for, for some of that stuff rolling out. And, and Sam, Sam, Xavier, uh, Johnny, I really appreciate you guys uh, having me on the show. It's a great time. Anytime, all the time, brother. You're welcome back. Anytime you think you got something good for us. And uh, I love you guys very much. I hope to see you guys in Miami or in Houston. And we will do it again soon. I love you guys. Have a great weekend. Thank you for your support. We go deep, homeboy. Aaron, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. <laughs> Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Tim foil hat, tin foil hat, tin foil hat.